All right. Here's an interesting question from a Westerner. So this one Western guy he was going through YouTube videos, not of my channel, some other channel. And he saw that in India, there's something called as Vashikaran, which is very famous. So he was wondering as if this is true. Does this, this really work? What is it? <laughs> and if it works, should normal people do it? Uh, or should this be only done by a certain group of special people? Or should we not do it at all? What are karmic implications and so and so all the FAQs related to Vashikaran, right? So I don't know how to define Vashikaran in English. <laughs> but if you talk from an Indian perspective, uh, it's like trying to control somebody and trying to force that person knowingly, unknowingly, directly, indirectly to come and love you, right? That's what is Vashikaran, basically, in short. So this gentleman was inquiring, uh, I don't get a good gut feeling about it, so what should I do? <laughs> uh, I've seen also in the West, sometimes they say, you know, the casting spell on somebody or you know, like getting the XYZ back sometimes, right? Get your X back. Well, nowadays in Kali Yuga, 21st century, it's not only X, it's Y, Z, Alpha, Gamma, Omega, Beta, Theta, so many, right? <laughs> so, Vashikaran is sometimes done by Tantrics, it's sometimes done by people um, who do some kind of Tamasic uh, Puja sometimes, you know, they, they do N number of things, right? And you can find them in YouTube, how they do Vashikaran, like what are the things they use when they do Vashikaran, right? So I don't think I'm a good person to give these type of information. But what I can definitely tell you about Vashikaran is I had also talked with my gurus a long time back, a decade back about this Vashikaran. And I asked them, is this good? Should we do it? Should this be encouraged? Then my Shiksha guru told me that Vashikaran actually uh, is against the laws of the universe because the universal law is based on freedom. Freedom means, and the universe is also based on love. So one of the uh, important aspects of love is that the person who you claim to love or who you love truly should have the freedom to not love you back right otherwise what what kind of love that is okay i love you if you don't love me i'll throw acid in your face right <laughs> that's like the love of kaliuga so if the person who you love or who you think you love does not love you back then uh, mostly it's very visibly seen that people go and spread venom hatred against that person in the society and try to you know, bring that person's reputation down, right? It happens for both the genders. So therefore, if you love somebody, then that person should have the freedom to either love you or not love you back. Otherwise, your love is not true love. It's conditional love, all right? Of course, theoretically and practically, we can very clearly say and see also that there is no true love in the material world that exists only in the spiritual realm because in the material realm everybody has dependencies and deficiencies right which they are trying to fulfill from somebody else right so therefore there is no true love in the material world in fact the scriptures say that god's love is only the love which is the only love which is selfless is the love of god and the love of a guru for his disciples the love of a mother comes very close to the love of God, but even then it is not selfless. All right? Yes, a mother's love is not selfless, unfortunately. So doing Vashikaran, trying to attract somebody um, forcefully is actually not love because so when you do that, what, what's happening is now, first of all, why are you doing Vashikaran? Because you are totally convinced or maybe you doubt that will this person love me or maybe you are totally convinced this person will never love me back, right? 
So then you go and do a shikar. So then you do all sorts of things and try to pull this person back, right? So then what happens is you are violating this fundamental principle of freedom and love. So then what happens is the person that you get is actually not the person who you fell in love with. And sooner or later, that is exposed, right? You can't do Vashikran for eternity. It's not possible. So sooner or later, you do manipulation, you do, do, do some subtle techniques and you get the person or whatever you do, right? But remember that you did not fall in love with this person who you have manipulated. You fell in love with the person who was not manipulated. So now... This is a different person. This is not the same person, right? And one day when this is exposed, when your tricks will be known by that person, then you will actually realize that, yes, I did. I did it, but it had no effect because sooner or later things will fall apart. So therefore, please avoid doing all this. This is very unpopular to say in YouTube that do not do Vashikar. YouTube is filled with uh, vashikaran mantra, Vashikaran this, that, you know, you do this, you do that, you know, yes, you'll get your ex back or you will get this XYZ person who you love, but apparently that person doesn't love you back. You will get this person, right? So therefore, the Bhagavad Gita gives us a very good model of spirituality. So you have to understand that even after Lord Krishna said the entire Bhagavad Gita, right? So he told Arjuna that, oh my dear Arjuna, I have now told you the Bhagavad Gita. Now you decide for yourself, right? Yathet chasi tathako, right? So you, you think and you deliberate and then you decide. Krishna did not tell Arjuna, oh, you Arjuna, I have told you, now you must listen to me. And if you don't, I will send you to hell. Did Krishna say like this? Absolutely not. So he said everything and he gave Arjuna the power to take the call. And then, of course, Arjuna tells, Karishya Vachanam Tava, right? He says, yes, I will do as you say. Not because he's fearful of Krishna. Not because uh, Krishna is an authority. I mean, which he is indeed. But he's not saying yes just because Krishna is an authority or he's like mortified. He's fearful of Krishna. Oh my God, what will happen if I say no to God? You know, he will send me to hell. So that's not the reason. Because Arjuna says, you know, he understands what Krishna said. He understands it intellectually, practically, theoretically, and also devotionally, right? So from all perspectives, Arjuna understands this, right? And then he says, Yathe chasi tatha kuru. I mean, he says, Kalishya vacharam tava. He says, yes, I will do what you said because it makes sense to me, not because you are some God and you are saying this, right? So therefore, if God can give this free will to a tiny atma, like you, me, Arjuna, or whoever, tiny spirit soul, then who are we to take away that freedom from somebody's life? Yes. So if you do this, then there will be horrendous karmic consequences for that person. Not that person, you. <laughs> What will happen to that person is secondary it's later. But first, it will happen to you, right? So I'm not saying if you do Vashikan, this will happen tomorrow or you know in next year or in six months or you will have a divorce or something. I'm not saying all this. But understand, if you do something adharmic, it will backfire and it will have karmic consequences because you are hurting somebody's freedom, somebody's free will. You are depriving somebody of their free will. That is sinful, right? That is something which you cannot do. Even God does not do that. Can you believe it? That is why God has created law of karma. He would have done it. He would have abused anybody and everybody, but he doesn't do it, right? So he just gives what we deserve, right? So therefore, 
if you want somebody in your life great nothing wrong with it you can express your desire but if that person does not feel the same way for you understand that this is your destiny right and move on there are other things in life which are much more important than uh, all these superficial things sometimes but again for you to understand that there are things bigger and more important you got to understand the teachings of the bhagavad gita so it's very important that we read and we understand that the all powerful supreme personality of god and lord shri krishna who is bhagwan as the shrimad bhagavatam says etah cham sakala pumsam krishnastu bhagavan asvayam he swam bhagwan he does not he himself does not curb your free will then who are we to curb somebody's free will right so doing vashikaran is not only wrong spiritually or religiously or oh, it's wrong morally ethically or whatever anybody who has some basic common sense all right so please do not do that and if somebody is your ex and you want that person back you can contact them if you have if you are so desperate but if they say no please abstain that is all from my side thank you